All right, so it's time to take a look at the past year. And just because it's been such a turbulent and unpredictable year for pretty much everyone, I kind of want to focus on just the positive artistic aspects of the year. And I invite you to do the same just because I feel like positivity is what we need right now. Now, I've divided this video into different categories. And first, I want to start with my new favorite art supplies. No, my favorite new art supplies. Of course, I've been using art supplies that I've liked in the past this year, but I've also been exploring new art supplies. Those are the ones that I want to talk a little bit about right now. So first up, I want to mention this set of watercolor pencils by Faber-Castell, the Albrecht Dürer line. I have the set of 36 that came in this lovely, how do you call that, uh, pencil holder. Anyway, I got it for Christmas last year, so I've had it for one year now, was able to experiment with it. And I really like the watercolor pieces that you can make with these, but I also just really like to sketch with them. Now, what I really like about them is that they're a little bit softer than the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. And if you want to just loosely sketch, I really like these for that. And of course, they are vibrant colors. They look in the dry form pretty much like the polychromos. Like I can't say that I see a huge difference. My personal advantage is that I have a bigger set of the watercolor pencils than I have of the polychromos. So I have a few more colors in here. So that's one other aspect why I really like them, but I just really like them for sketching my sketchbook, but also for watercolor work. So I think they're really diverse. So in case you're looking for a diverse medium for sketching, but also for watercolor, check out watercolor pencils. It might be just up your alley. So next up is something that I purchased in the summer. It's uh, pastel matte paper and pan pastels because I wanted to get into pastels and I had watched a lot of YouTube videos to just kind of figure out what supplies I would need to be able to work well. And I found this paper and these pan pastels and a lot of videos recommended for the type of artwork that I thought I wanted to be making. Ah, they are so intuitive. I really love it. It's like you don't really need to have experience with pastel to make beautiful artwork with them. In fact, you will later see the first portrait that I attempted with these together with colored pencil and I think it turned out really nice considering that it was my first time trying them out. I have the 10 set of pan pastel. I do think it's lovely that you can mix all the colors but if there's a color that you need a lot it does make sense to buy that in the pan form otherwise you'll find yourself layering a lot a lot a lot a lot until you get to the results. Like they mix really well on paper, but I don't know, um, topic for a different video. Really like experimenting with these. I did some more detailed, realistic portrait work with them. And in the new year, I kind of want to try to be a little, a little bit more loose. Also try out pastel sticks, try out a little bit more with the Carbothello pastel pencils that I purchased after I got these. And yeah, I'll see where that takes me. Very excited about them. And last but definitely not least, I want to mention this set of gouache paints by Caron Dush, the studio set. It's a student quality set that comes in these pans. As you can see, I have been using them and I only purchased them like a month ago, I think. I absolutely love them. So obviously what you can do with gouache are realistic pieces. But what I really appreciate about them is that you can lay down flat colors with a matte finish, which I just think is beautiful for illustration work, which is something that I really want to get into. So I didn't really purchase them with the intent to make realistic artwork with them, even though I have kind of tried that out already. And that works too, if you, if you want to do that. But just because it's a little bit hard to layer them, like you can't layer them in indefinitely, you're a little bit limited in putting too much detail in and putting too many layers in. And that's actually a beautiful thing. And then the other thing is because they're student quality, I feel like I've never had a medium that just invites me to doodle and relax into doodling. Like that's just never been my thing. I always want to get somewhere with a sketch. I want to practice. I want to make something beautiful. 
And with these, for the first time, I feel like I have a medium where it's just pure joy for me to put paint on a paper and just marvel at the beautiful color that comes out of it and then it dries in this matte finish and it's just so beautiful and I just really love it for that. And yeah, I want to get more into illustration work. Actually, I did buy another set of the Winter Newton Designer Squash, so the Artist Quality Gouache. I haven't even tried them out yet because I was just having so much fun just doodling with these. But I've also done some, I guess, more ambitious artwork, you could call it, with these as well. And um, yeah, but the Windsor Newton you will definitely see in a video in the coming year. And ah, love gouache. Love it. So the next category is about new visual artists that I really, really like. And by new, I don't mean that they are necessarily new artists, but that I just discovered them sometime during this year. And it's a bit hard to pinpoint when I discovered an artist, but I'm pretty sure that the ones that I'm going to mention I kind of just stumbled across in 2020. So the first artist that I want to mention is Black Bean CMS. He has a very fun personality. You can see it on his YouTube channel and also Instagram and probably Twitter. I'm not really sure. He makes oil pastel portraits that are very weird and whimsical and he combines that with his very charming personality very fun videos and it's just like you can see the joy that he has in creation and that's always super inspiring to me so his channel has grown quite a bit this year and it's very fun to see where he's headed on his artistic journey and what i really really like about him is that he encourages to use cheap art supplies. He, like a lot of his artwork, he uses Crayola oil pastels, so they're very cheap, very, very affordable. And I find that really refreshing that he's not afraid to use cheap children art supplies for the artwork that he creates that is definitely not on a child level. Really highly recommend that you check him out. The next artist I want to mention is Teddy Parker. I found her on Instagram. And she paints with house paint, which I find also very cool. She said that she's using affordable paints so that people can afford her art, which I also find like a very refreshing point of view. And her art is awesome. Like she does realistic work without a lot of detail. So it's like you can completely see the realism in it. But when you look up close, it's just like a bunch of paint blobs on on the canvas i think she uses i'm not sure wood panels i'm not really sure what she paints on but um super awesome artwork and i just really like her approach and it's very fun to to look at her art like i find it really inspiring the next artist i'm not sure if i found her on instagram first or on etsy because she has an etsy store it's maya tomljanovic i hope i said that correct tomljanovic Tomjanovic. Let's look that up. Maya Tomjanovic. I really hope that I said that correctly. I'm really sorry if I didn't. Anyway, she's a digital artist and she makes these fun illustrations about, about people enduring life is, I guess, how you could describe it. And it's just, I really just like her illustrations and I could completely see buying all her illustrations as art prints and putting them up in my apartment. I just... They're so beautiful, like she has some travel inspired prints, you know, about people in other countries, but it's not, um, like it always has like a personal touch, like there's always like a person, I don't know if there's always a person, but there's a person usually in the illustration and just really, really like it, find it really inspiring. And I mean, she's a digital artist, but you know, Illustration is something that I want to get into, so I'm kind of thinking that I will probably do something in gouache. Not really in her style or anything, but I just... The idea of making something illustration-wise with flat colors like this is something that speaks to me and that I think I want to explore more in the new year. And the last artist I want to mention is someone that I found on YouTube, Jessica Karpishin. She goes by the name Jess Karp on the internet. And her channel also blew up this year. She has very inspiring sketchbook tours. Not just sketchbook tours, but just like kind of takes her into her sketching process. And like she has other videos about how she's painting a big picture for her room or painting a mural, I think I've seen. 
and just fun projects where you feel inspired to to go on this journey with her and she's just really talented all her work like she likes to dabble in different media as well and it's just very inspiring and i'm pretty sure that seeing her gouache work was one of the reasons that i said okay i think i want to try gouache again and just you know give it another chance because i didn't really like the paints that I used before. And yeah, I'm very grateful and I'm pretty sure that Jess had something to do with it. So thank you Jess for making me try out gouache again because I love it so much at this point in time. Now, the last category that I came up with is my own favorite artwork. I know that this is a little bit self-centered, <laughs> but I still wanted to put that in because you know, I like to think back about what I've created and what I've liked about it. And I'm actually not very critical in the sense that I put myself down if I don't like an artwork. But um, yeah, I can be excited about my own artwork. And I think that's something that maybe a lot of you need to work on because I feel like a lot of artists are very critical of their own work. And I don't know if this gets you any further. Yeah, I try to just enjoy the artwork that I made as much as I can. So as I said, I was dabbling a little bit in pastels this year and when I first got my pan pastels, I made this portrait pretty much like I only did a very few marks on other pieces of paper before I made this. And I think for the first attempt with pastels, this turned out pretty well and I just really, really like it. And yeah, so I was very happy with it. Then after that, I made this little eye study, which I also think turned out really nicely, considering that I didn't have all that experience. Obviously, I used a lot of color pencil for the detail, which, you know, is really what makes the difference here in that I already know how to use color pencil a little bit at least. But yeah, the... Pan pastel on the pastel mat is just such a great thing to work on. And then I also made this artwork after I got the Carbothello pastel pencils and it's this one and I spent a lot of time on this portrait in particular. It's already very dusty, oops. And I really like how the details came out. I'm not overly happy with maybe the contrast of it, but I took a lot of time and I do really, yeah, like the journey that I've had so far with pastels. So I'm really excited to, to do more of this in the new year. And then I wanna mention two other paintings that I don't have here anymore, but that were kind of like a breakthrough for me in other aspects. So the first one I wanna mention is a puppy portrait that I did in watercolor with a few details added in white gouache, which I already had at the time. That's awesome for me because I already had the reference photo that I used for that one last year. And I was a little bit too shy. I was like, no, I, I think I wanna, would like to do it in watercolor, but I was just not feeling the level of confidence that I needed to undergo the project. And I just really like how it came out. Like I'm not a very experienced watercolor artist, but I just really, really liked how this one came together. I also used the Faber-Castell watercolor pencils a little bit on that at least, not fully, but for some of the details I used the watercolor pencils and I just really like how that came out and that was a little boost to my uh, confidence as a watercolor artist, which I don't really call myself that, but you know, that really helped. And then I also made this cheetah watercolor painting and I really like this one because it is a little bit more loose and I didn't put in a ton of detail and I didn't try to render it completely realistically. Like when you take a closer look at the little spots on the fur, uh, you can most definitely see the marks that I made with the watercolor pencils before I dissolved them. So I, I wasn't really trying to achieve a highly detailed realistic finish with this. I just really liked the looseness of the paint on the paper and I really just like how it came out because I did not overwork it and that's definitely something that I want to work on in the new year as well. Do not overwork every single piece. They don't need it. They definitely don't. And that was my review of the past year. I kind of hope that you feel inspired to review your own artistic journey in the past, kind of see where you drew inspiration from, what art materials you like to work with, maybe what subject matter you really discovered for yourself in the past year and just think back a little bit about what it is that was good 
and where you maybe would like to head in the new year. All right, so that's it for me. Bye.